Welcome to another exciting edition of How to Own a Young Earth Creationist, henceforth known as a Yek. Today, lesson number 517, if people evolved from monkeys, why are monkeys still alive? If people evolved from monkeys, why are monkeys still around? Follow along in your Yik Owner's Manual, pages 237,432 to 239,115. In order to take possession of a Yik proposing this argument, the first thing the rational thinker must do is stay calm. You will most likely find this to be rather difficult, as it is not easy to watch viable neurons and synapses abused in such a reckless and foolhardy manner. But remember, calm, sober, rational, critical, and objective thought will always trump alcohol-induced knee-jerk reactionary debasement of myelinated axons. In order to even consider such a cerebrally destitute proposition, the rational thinker must descend to a frighteningly low intellectual level. However, the lowest level you can go, think potty training, will still not be enough for you to be on the same level of reasoning as your yik. It will be necessary to bring your yik up to your lowest level. Impossible, you say? Nonsense. Even though the yik brain has endured years of neglect and abuse, it is still a human brain and therefore will, by definition, always have potential, saving, of course, that its oxygen supply is not cut off for an extended period of time. So we will start small and work our way up. To begin the intellectual ascent of your yik, follow these steps. Step 1. Stay in a clear, steady, and confident voice there is a difference between apes and monkeys. Pointing out the tail and using comparative visual stimulation will jumpstart the long dormant synapses of the yik brain. You may run into this. Well, they all look like monkeys to me. If your yik responds in such a manner, it may be time to appeal to the part of the yik brain that has not gone completely dormant, the cute puppet detection apparatus. Google Satellite Maps will be our puppet for today. This is a photograph of a business. Explain to your yik that those who have come before him or her, also known as the giants whose shoulders we are all standing on, have conveniently given you at least one clue about the business. From this photo, you can deduce that the business is in Wichita. In order to determine what nation and or state Wichita is in, recall your geography lesson. If your geography fails you and your yik, you may now instruct your yik that the giants whose shoulders we are all standing on went out of their way to do much of this learning for us. This is also a great opportunity to show your yik that our gargantuan predecessors organized this information in an easy to use index which saves valuable time. You may now instruct your yik on the proper method of typing Wichita into the Google search engine. So now that we have a geographic reference to our business, we must now learn as much about it as we can. From this vantage point, very little can be learned about the business. As your yik zooms in and gets closer and closer to the subject, more and more knowledge will become apparent. The yik will now learn that the giants whose shoulders we are all standing on happily label the streets for us so we now have general geographic reference points to work with. Now that we get even closer, you and your yik can now begin to detect features of the business which may offer clues to answer such questions such as, is it still in business? What kind of business is it? I wonder what Cleveland and Quagmire are doing right now. Oh, that's nasty. For example, your yik can now see that from knowledge already gained by our predecessors, the business is located at the intersection of 33rd and Mead. The two large parking lots indicate that many people might work there. The semi-trailers backed up to loading docks indicates that large amounts of something is either regularly delivered or shipped from this location. Furthermore, you and your yik can now begin the process of logical deduction. Explain to your yik that deduction is the process of decreasing possibilities or the process of elimination if he or she likes. Ask your yik the following question. Is it a bank? Banks generally do not have large shipping and receiving yards like this, so it is probably safe to conclude that this is not a bank. Ask your yik if this is a grocery store or department store. If your yik replies with something to the effect of, Well... A store like that wouldn't have its uh, wouldn't have its uh, parking lots divided up like that. 
This also looks like it's a you know, pretty nice day. It's probably be more cars in the parking lot. So this is probably Saturday or Sunday when everybody wasn't working. So it's uh, it's most likely a warehouse or maybe some sort of manufacturing plant or something. You know. If your yik responds in such a manner, thank your lucky stars because your yik is now beginning, at least, to understand the scientific method. This business is a manufacturing place and is the place of employment of your humble narrator. Other employees of this manufacturing plant that are thinking of posting some sort of smart aleck message in the comments section of this video should now be advised that their hard drives will be loaded up with homosexual pornography and their password changed to the entire text of Atlas Shrugged if your narrator is angered. After that fun little exercise, your yik might now be in a more receptive mood having his or her brain stimulated perhaps for the first time since grade school. It is now time to explain to your yik that seeing all primates as monkeys is the view from here, where it was shown that very little could be learned. In order for the question to even be considered, your yik must now zoom in to this level, which is about the level of understanding you get from a high school biology course, which, as you know, only scratches the surface of understanding, but in this case, it will be enough. There are very serious differences between monkeys and apes, including a rotary shoulder which allows apes to hang from their arms. Apes can walk on two feet where monkeys cannot. Apes have an average lifespan of up to 60 years where monkeys have a lifespan of about 20 to 30 years and most apes do not have tails. Okay, fine. If people evolve from apes, why are there still apes around? Evolutionary biology does not, in fact, say that people evolved from apes. It says people are apes. As a matter of fact, people are great apes. The Homo sapien, that is a person's scientific name, is a member in good standing of the family of animals called Hominidae. The family Hominidae is divided into four genuses, that is the superordinate classification right before the species. There is Pongo, also known as the orangutans, Gorilla, which consists of gorillas, the genus Pan, which encompasses the chimpanzees, including the tool-using pygmy chimp, the controversial closest cousin of the Homo sapien, and of course Homo with its lone surviving species, the Homo sapien. Yeah, maybe you're a Homo, but I ain't no Homo. Perhaps now would be a good time to remind you that your rectum was never intended to be used as an alternate storage location for your cranium. The word homo has always referred to this genus from the Latin. The word homosexual comes from a translation of a book called Psychopathia Sexualis. When C.G. Chaddock first translated the book in 1892, he combined two words together, the Greek homos meaning same and the Latin sexual referring obviously to sex. So calling you a homo sapien does not imply a desire to fellatiate another man any more than calling you a cantaloupe implies a desire to have a firearm discharge while its barrel is inside or near an orifice at either end of your digestive system. <laughs> You're a cantaloupe. <laughs> All great apes had a common ancestor. The most likely candidate is Pyrapithecus catalonicus that may have looked something like this. Most likely may have. So in other words, you don't even know what you're talking about. Wrong, you overgrown, underdeveloped, useless zit on the face of humanity. Just as you could not conclusively determine the nature of this business, you were able to conclude, based on available evidence, that it was most likely a warehouse or manufacturing plant. We can conclusively say that Pyrapithecus catalonicus is not an ancestor of a frog, a shark, a flock of butt-sex-loving sheep, a cat, a cantaloupe, a snake, a very concerned spaniel, a turtle, whatever in the hell this gay-looking thing is supposed to be, a cardinal, scooby frickin' do, or a horse. It has features that are consistent with those of the great ape family. While it is true that more information and investigation is needed, the most likely outcome of that investigation is that Pyropithecus catalonicus will be shown to be the common ancestor of all great apes. Therefore, the next time a slick yink thinks he or she has really zinged you with the why are there still monkeys ploy, simply demonstrate their own ignorance and you can be sure to take ownership of your new ink yank with the greatest of expedience. This is Jaguar Jones saying good day and happy owning.